So you want to get outside, you want to have some fun with your dog, even go on some adventures. But there's some things holding you back. You're not sure how your dog's going to do. You might be nervous. You want to keep your dog safe. You might have a history of some different things that have happened to it or different things that it's done. Muzzle training and muzzle conditioning is probably going to be the next step for you. This is the best way to progress forward so you can get out and have some fun with your dogs. Hey, it's Gary with Natural Instinct Dog Training. This next edition of the Adventure Series, we need to talk about muzzles. Now there's lots of different types of muzzles and I'm gonna explain them, but first I want you to understand what muzzles really are for. Now the two basic types of muzzles, you have a cage type muzzle, which the one that I prefer and not endorsed by this company at all, this is just the brand that I've used and I really like them, is the Baskerville muzzles. So kind of sounds like Louisville, but it's Baskerville. They are a firm rubber type material. It's really tough. And I prefer these over the wire types only because I've seen some of the wire types, the welds will break and now you've got a sharp piece of metal that could actually injure your dog. Nothing on this is actually gonna be able to hurt your dog and I'm yet to see a dog be able to get their way through one of these. I've seen dogs get out of them, but they're not gonna get through them. They can't really get in here to chew them, to tear them up. The next type are the tight fitting muzzles. And there's a few variations on these. There's some that look prettier than others, but these muzzles are solely designed for temporary short-term use. So when I say temporary short-term use, I really mean just that. So vets offices, groomers, things like that, these type muzzles are really good because they keep the dog from being able to open their mouth. So when it's on all the way and it's adjusted, the dog's mouth is held closed so they accidentally can't get a finger in the dog's mouth if there's something going on. You do want to make sure that these are fitted properly and you can see in a couple of these examples the right way that you're supposed to fit this type of muzzle. When this one's fitted correctly, we've got space and I can't get my finger in there. He can't open his mouth. They can breathe through their nose in this type of muzzle, but that's it. We can't take treats, we can't drink water. The dog's not really going to be happy in this type of muzzle, but in certain situations, it can even be like when groomers are trying to clip a dog's toenails, they'll use this type of muzzle because they want to make sure the dog can't nip them or anything else. It's not going to be very comfortable for the dog. So your basket type muzzles, and they come in all kinds of different sizes. This is, I think, a size three and a size four. And you can see in the examples the way they're supposed to fit on the dogs but the muzzles are never supposed to be any type of form of punishment or okay, something bad's getting ready to happen. The term muzzle conditioning is thrown around in the dog training community a lot, but understanding what muzzle conditioning is, seems like we understand what it is, but the way we understand it will also denote how we approach it. So muzzle conditioning is supposed to mean we're getting the dog used to wearing the muzzle. What it really needs to be is the dog needs to understand that when the muzzle goes on, it needs to stay on until I take it off. The reason why we use this type or a basket type muzzle is the dog's nose is gonna fit right here, their mouth is right there. They're still able to open their mouth inside of this veterinarians, groomers don't like these because if they're holding the dog, they can easily slip a finger inside that muscle and get bit. There's no such thing as putting this muzzle on the dog where they can never get out of it, nor would we really want that. We also don't want our dogs wearing them all the time, but we need to know when do we actually use a muzzle and when do we use the muzzle when we're conditioning. Those are, in a way, two different things. 
when we are using a muzzle, the way to think of a muzzle is, this is basically a crate for the dog's face. The muzzle itself is not going to change our dog's behavior. So if you have a dog that is dog reactive, human reactive, it wants to grab cats, this is going to keep the dog from being able to bite something with its mouth, but it's not going to stop the actual behavior. This is, however, a form of restraint. So it would be kind of like um, you having your hands tied behind your back. It may be all fun and games until you think there's real zombies outside and now you really want your hands so you can protect yourself. A dog's mouth is like our hands. So when you limit a dog's ability to use their mouth, they are fully aware that they have limited ability. And if a dog feels threatened, or if a dog really just wants to pick up the ball, they're gonna do what they can to quote unquote, untie their mouth. So what we want to do is explain to our dogs that when we put on the muzzle, it's something positive. It's not a punishment. I am not gonna put a muzzle on a dog right before I walk into the vet's office knowing that my dog is human or dog reactive because now the dog's gonna have a direct association that when they see the muzzle, have on the muzzle, something really scary might be happening. It's not really good practice. It's just like when we pick up our leashes, our dogs know we're going on a walk, we've quote unquote, leash conditioned our dogs. They know the conditions in which when I pick up the leash, the conditions are I'm going on a walk. And that in there is the key to muzzle conditioning. What I want my dogs to think the conditions are in relation to the muzzle are good things. I'm gonna keep you safe and I'm going to do positive things. So if every time I put on the muzzle, my dog gets to go for a walk and it's a good, happy, peaceful walk, soon the dog will start relating to the muzzle as getting to go on a good, happy, peaceful walk. If every time I get out the muzzle, I give the dog a treat through the muzzle, the dog says, ooh, I see the muzzle, I must be getting a treat. Rudy must have heard the word treat, he's getting ready to come over. Here, we'll, we'll demonstrate. So if I have my muzzle, and Rudy knows I have the muzzle, he also heard me say treat. If I have the muzzle, and he knows that when I have the muzzle, a treat will come through the muzzle, he's gonna wanna put his face in the muzzle, and so will Steve, because Steve needs treats too. Buddy will probably decide he wants one at some point. I technically want my dogs to be like, no, I wanna put my face in there first to get that treat. That's what this muzzle needs to start to represent. You need to give them a reason to want, you can see my fingers fit right through, he goes right in, he gets the treat, he's happy. In the beginning, the muzzle is a treat dispensing device. I want them to know that when, and I'll fold the straps back so it's easier for them to put their face in. I want them to know that when they see the muzzle, magical treats come through the front of this muzzle. So I want them to want to shove their face in there. Once we're comfortable with that, we can start strapping it on the dog and then they know that whenever they have the muzzle on, let me turn the straps around. Whenever they have the muzzle on, and I'm ready, they're going to get a treat. Then if I take it, make sure you go behind the ears, and I'll explain the straps. They go behind the ears, our muzzle is on. Now, with our muzzle on, I can still, if I can find a treat, I can still give Rudy a treat, then quickly unstrap and take the muzzle loose. And he still wants more treats, that's okay. And still wants to put his face in there. 
what we're doing is we're getting them used to wearing the muzzle. If you've already watched the Leave It video, great. If you haven't, you can go back to get a little refresher if you need. But if the dog tries to paw at the muzzle, we'll see what Buddy does, because he's, yeah, see, he doesn't like it. So if I try to put him in there, if he goes to pull away, I'm gonna offer a little resistance. I, go boy. And as soon as he gives to that resistance, let's see what Rudy does. So I'm gonna hold it here, and I'm here at the back. Now I'm looking, he's probably not going to because Rudy just wants more treats. But if he did try to paw or resist, I'm gonna offer a little resistance, a little uh uh. He stops, good boy, and the muscle comes off. I wanna also teach them that when it's on, you're not allowed to ask to take it off. You're not allowed to paw to take it off. So I wanna know that when it's on, they know not to take it off because if they're stressed, they're gonna to wanna to try to take the muzzle off. You wanna make sure that they know that when it's on, it has to stay on. Just about any dog I've ever met, if they get a toenail stuck in here, they can pull this sucker off in a second. And in an emergency, I want them to be able to pull the muzzle off. The trick is, is we teach them to keep the muzzle on. In the beginning, the conditions are when you see the muzzle, you get a treat. As we progress, we have our dogs casually wearing the muzzle and they're just walking around the kitchen and we randomly hand them a treat because they have the muzzle on. If you get to a point where your dog wants the muzzle so they can go for a walk, they want the muzzle so they can get a treat, they want the muzzle so they can go for a car ride, now you're heading the right track. In the dog's mind, the conditions are when they wear a muzzle, they get treats. Those are great conditions. The cautions that you wanna take are putting on the muzzle and then immediately going to do a dog introduction. If that dog introduction doesn't go well, the conditions that exist when the dog wears a muzzle is they're probably gonna meet another dog that they don't like. They're gonna meet strangers and so on. I don't want my dogs wearing muzzles all the time, but in the beginning when we're muzzle conditioning, you wanna create positive conditions for wearing the muzzle. So when the muzzle is on, it goes around, you have this loop in the back, it goes over the ears, clips, and this strap, which is adjustable, goes down their snout. You want to make sure that this is snug because it keeps it from tipping down, and you want to make sure that this is snug. I don't want it too tight, but I want it snug. You can also, with this loop in the back, you can clip a little carabiner to the dog's collar. You can slip skinnier collars through here to connect. It just gives you another added point of support so the dog can't slip out of it. The way we do this is simple. You keep the muzzle positive. You give them treats through the muzzles, hot dog through the muzzle, whatever. You can give them water, let them drink through the muzzle. No, it's not gonna be as easy as if they didn't have it on, but I want them to feel like that they can do life in the muzzle. Once they get really used to the muzzle, let them play with each other having a muzzle on and it being comfortable. If I'm working on dogs that need to learn how to play with other dogs, but I feel I need a muzzle for safety, I first need that dog to feel comfortable playing with the muzzle on. If they're not comfortable playing with the muzzle on, as soon as they start to play, they're gonna to try to take it off. Conditioning is exposing the dog to all types of conditions, keeping it positive, but also setting small boundaries if they go to mess with the muzzle. And that's not anything big. It's a little bump with the leash, a little tap, where you're just like, hey, and they stop. They're a good dog, give them praise. I want good things going through their mind in relation to keeping the muzzle on, and I want good things going on in their mind for putting the muzzle on in the first place. I hope this video was really helpful. Once you have this mastered, now we're gonna start talking about ways to get out of the house and start having fun with your dogs.
Thank you for watching. Please like, follow, subscribe to our channel because we're gonna be adding a lot more training videos that I think are gonna come in handy for all of you.